Support for Radio Friends comes from OsteoStrong. Improvements in bone density, strength, and power can be achieved by weekly five-minute no-sweat sessions on their four-spectrum machines. These isometric robotic machines safely emulate high-impact loading on different parts of the skeletal system, which stimulates activity in bone-building cells. Balance and agility can be improved by two-minute sessions on vibration plates. Every session is supervised by a trained coach. Learn more on Facebook or call to set up a complimentary wellness assessment and session. He's in the wall. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on this Thursday, March the 2nd. This is the month of spring. And what do you think of when we think of spring? Think of frogs? <laughs> Walter Bargain of is Of course, here. of course we do. Walter Bargain is here, our first uh, poet laureate for the state of Missouri. And I think of frogs and I think of snakes coming out in spring and summer. <laughs> Whenever I think of snakes, I think of Walter Bargain, who is the, the snake man here. But what do you got today? Um, uh, I'm going to read at least one poem from a much longer po poem called Living in the Amphibious World is, is the name of the long poem. Does it have to do with snakes or just frogs? No, just, just frogs. Um, and, and this is a, a tale that was told to me by uh, Margaret Peden. Uh huh. Petch Peaton. Yeah. Uh, about something that happened to her and her husband in Oaxaca. So this is a true story in the poem. Uh, well, form. you know, she told me two or three sentences, and then I just filled in a lot of imagination. <laughs> okay. So it's a true story <laughs> with um, extra imagination added to it. Yes. Embellishments. Yes. In, yes much embellishment. What's the name of it? Uh, it it's just uh, one part of living in the amphibious world. All right. So here is Walter Bargain with one part of living in the amphibious world. <clears throat> in Oaxaca, doors are being opened and doors are closed. And others bang on their hinges for three nights and there isn't a breath or breeze around. In this adobe hacienda, room leads to room and there is still another, as if it is rooting deeper into the hillside above the town, above the settling day's market of dust, of cars and donkeys, and feet passing the stalls crowded with open sacks of beans and corn, stacks of hand-woven rugs and blankets, designs that are a thousand years of the hand's memory. Wire-caged chickens and splashes of parrots, mounds of guava and mangoes, too ripe to last under the sun's domain. In this part of the house, away from the plaza, sleep comes slowly, heat still crawling up the cactus slopes, inflating the room into sweaty calm when the doors softly bang, the doors that once opened into a patio and now swing flatly into a wall that holds back a shoulder of the sliding hill. The third night he wakes. He can't breathe. There's something heavy on his chest. The doors are banging as they have each night. She strikes a match, holds up a candle, and there, inches from his chin in front of his crossed vision, is not a heart attack, but a frog hardly larger than his thumb. Its skin glazes green, its eyes volcanic, two rubies burning down the dark, two boiling drops of blood falling toward him, and he gasps, the flame gutters out. She feels for the wall switch. He lies perfectly rigid. The light on, and there's no frog on him, on the floor, under the bed, tangled in the sheets, and the banging doors that let in so much remain locked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that's part one. That's part that's one, part okay. One. Uh, uh, this one is uh, more local. Okay, so we've got about, uh, can you do it in two minutes? Um, yeah, I think so. All right, so here's the, here's the other part. I've forgotten my daughter's parent-teacher conference, and now at work I remember sitting around among ghosts and angels, jailbirds and dirty old men, all shuffling papers and answering phones. I'm wearing a fringed leather vest, so, uh, so each move, considered and ill-conceived, trails the wake of a hundred beaded arm-length strands, the elegance of each defeat clearly visible. No tie-dye, but a straw hat and a serape aping a sunset along with cowboy boots bought at an Albuquerque church yard sale, enough diamond cross-stitching on the bootleg to shame a rattlesnake, and toes so pointed they could thread a needle. 
On the phone, my daughter threatens never to go back to school knowing I'm costumed for Halloween. I go anyway. In science, snakes watch from terrariums as I move across the empty room to the small chair in front of the teacher. Her desk is heaped with coral, books to identify the furred and feathered, startling minerals, hooked seeds, exoskeletons, teeth that bite the dust covering them, shells and fossils. I can hardly see her, through, though our voices easily carry across the wreck of this exhausted gesture. On the front of the desk's gray scratched metal skirt, a poster is taped. The red-eyed tree frog, its jade skin a hypnotic jewel, glistening over a jungle of desks so much larger than this life or its own. So, Walter, this, those two poems came from what book? Uh, th th these, uh, th this, days like this are necessary, new and selected poems. Okay. Yeah. And you wrote all of these, you wrote all of these poems? Yes. When you're writing a poem like that, how long does it actually take you? Is it something that just flows out fluidly, or do you start and you stop, and the next day you go on? Uh, th this poem contains, uh, five sections. I've read two of them. And um, generally speaking, what I found was that I wrote one section a day. It, it, one of the wonderful things about uh, writing poems, it's like you, you train your attention. It's like you're tuning in to a frequency. Right. And for somehow, for some reason, I was tuned in to this frog, this uh, red-eyed tree frog. And I was just finding it everywhere. Here I am in mid-Missouri. This is a... Um, Central American and uh, South American frog. And you were finding it? No, I was not. I was not actually. I was finding examples of it. You know, like yes, the 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 frog on the on a poster on the uh, skirt of the desk, in at the parent teacher conference, the story that uh, Petch Peden told me. Um, the the opening story is about. Um, Fra, uh, fr uh, a, a burlesque, which is why I didn't read it, uh, in San Francisco where uh, suddenly there are all these frogs that have been smashed on the ceiling because the piano, which rose up to the ceiling, <laughs> the, the uh, machine got stuck and it smashed oh. all the frogs on the ceiling. And so, this is a true story? It's, um, it's the, uh, another story that was told to me by somebody who went to that bar years later. Okay. And so this was the story a, that was being told. It could be a true story or it could be a legend. It could be embellished. Well, they have a drink named after the <laughs> the, the, the red-eyed tree frog. That, so. that explains it all. Yeah. If, if people want your books, they're available where? Um, they're available at... Um, Blue Dog, uh, uh, Yellow, Yellow Dog, Dog. Yellow Dog, Ye Ye Yellow Dog, and Skylark Burke Books and on Amazon. A on Amazon. Okay, or from the trunk of his car. Yeah, yes, yes. Stop thank me you. any at any time. I'll jump out and sell you a book. Got it, Walter Bargain. Thank you so much for coming by. It's a pleasure <laughs> chatting with you. Something you'd like to hear or see? I'd love to hear from you. Drop me an email, pepperp.missouri.edu. Have yourself a nice day and smile.